Hi guys, I'm Blackie Thomas for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. In response to my percussion revolver series, I've had close to 100 requests wanting my two cents on cap jams and Colt revolvers and how to prevent them, how to treat them, etc. So this video will be my response to that. Okay, Colts you do not understand, when you put a percussion cap onto the cone as it was called in that day, today it's called a percussion nipple. When you fire, bang, and you go to cock, the spent cap falls off, goes down here in the action, and upon next time, click, it jams and causes the action to stay up. What are the factors that cause it? Why? How to prevent it? Three factors. Okay. The three factors that cause it are nipple design, hammer face, mainspring. Let's take each one of those in turn. Okay. The nipple sits inside this recess and was a replaceable part because at the time Colt was creating this, metallurgy is not what it is today. And these nipples would burn out over time and needed to be replaced. That's the reason it's not just a milled part of the receiver. Also notice these milled cutouts for the nipple to sit into. Of course, you've got your chamber on this end and the nipple plugs up the other end. Now, what it performs the function of, it holds the percussion cap. Upon impact, the fire jumps through that into the main powder charge. The main powder charge ignites and runs out. During that time that the main powder charge is actively burning, the pressure within the cylinder is going to spike to like 20,000, 30,000 PSI for a very short, brief instant. During that time, uh, least resistance, pressure wants to flow back up to that nipple. So thus the cap does two functions. One, it holds the priming compound, and two, after ignition, it acts as a gas seal to prevent gas flowing backwards, okay? Now, let us look at the chamber itself. Notice here that when the hammer is all the way down, how it encloses the top of the cap. This is because the caps of that day were inferior to what we have today. The material was very, very soft. In fact, you'll quite often list, see them listed as foil caps, where the cap material was not much more than like an aluminum baking pan today. I mean, you could just crush them flat with your fingertip. Elmer Keith talks about trying to force one down onto a nipple one time, and it ignited. They were so sensitive. So upon ignition, the cap kind of explodes. And what Colt was going for was to contain the explosion in this area and those back pressure gases as well. Thus, you notice how the hammer nose comes over and shields the top of the actual chamber. Okay, ignition has happened. Step two, the hammer. Now, if we look dead on, you will see this slot right there at the bottom of the channel. Now, it never made sense to me because on the back of the Colt cylinder, its safety were these little pins right here. And those are supposed to sit into that notch in the hammer. Thus, why didn't Colt just leave a flat face and then use a drill to simply put a little pivot hole that that would plug over that? But he didn't. He put a milled notch into it. And that's because of what Colt was going for. Remember that back pressure and gases? If you watch the hammer arc, when it comes down, it's not hitting in a straight line. It's actually kind of chopping there at the end, kind of a downward chop. It hits and it squeezes and ignites the percussion cap. Bang! The pressure now flows backwards and expands out in this small open chamber and allows it to vent out upward sideways and everything else. Due to the angle of the nipple and that slot in the base of the hammer, this makes the weak link, so to speak, at the base of the percussion cap. The, this part here of the nipple, the very bottom of the nipple if you're looking at it. So it would vent gas downward and thus split the bottom of the percussion nipple, percussion cap. Now that spent cap has gone from around to bang and it's open and it's split on the bottom. Now the second job. The hammer is 
held in the gases due to the mainspring. We'll get to that one in a minute. And now it begins to retreat. It pulls back. If these ears right there on the hammer face are sharp in any way, notice that chopping action there at the end of the stroke. They dig into the cap. And upon ignition, bang, it bites the cap. So when it goes to move back, it drags the cap off and drops it into the action. If you will take some needle files and some sandpaper and smooth this face off and smooth between them where this is deburred, especially these two points down here at the very bottom, you'll greatly reduce the amount of cap jams because the cap does not flow back in there and nothing to grip. So now that when the hammer moves away, it doesn't take the cap with it. Now, rotation. Notice this groove right here milled into the face of the Colt. This groove right here is, for lack of a better term, the ejection port. So that whenever I cock it, after firing the nipple, and firing the charge, bang, it's been fired. Upon cocking, it rotates. So that spent cap rotates through this large ejection port, comes out here and falls off. Remember, it split the bottom, so it should tip and fall. That was Colt's idea. So, the third point, the mainspring. The mainspring should hold the pressure and drive the hammer forward, but beyond that, it must be strong enough that upon ignition and that back pressure, the hammer should not rock back. It will minutely, a couple thousand, but it should not rock back. A weakened mainspring can cause the hammer to buck backwards, and thus you get cap jams. It's pile driving the cap fragments into that hammer face, and that thing is not holding it. This brings it off the nipple, and then it seats. Now when you go to rotate, it's stuck to the hammer and it drops. The three factors that I see most often in causing cap jams are a weak mainspring, or someone has lightened up a mainspring for combat shooting and, you know, these cowboy action matches. And what they're saving in time, they're losing in cap jams, because a cap jam takes a whole lot longer to clear than the thousandths of a second you're going to get by cocking a two-pound hammer versus a four- or five-pound hammer. I don't think it's a big advantage. Plus, you lose the uh, reliability of ignition. The hammer face should be cleaned and deburred totally to keep it from gripping in any way, and so it just comes cleanly away. This ejection port in here should be free of large burrs, so it's not going to drop off in there. You want it to roll smoothly and come out here on the side and fall out. And lastly, we come back to the nipple. The nipple should be of a sufficient internal opening size that the force goes through and ignites the main charge, but not so big that too much back pressure comes back. How can you tell if there's too much? If that opening is too big, usually if you take a standard size paper clip and open it up straight and run it through, it should be where it will not go through or it will just barely go through. If it'll drop through and waller out, your nipples are getting too big on the inside. Another good indicator is when you go to cock the hammer and in here you start to get a lot of fouling. That's back pressure blowing back, blowing through the cap and through that slot into here. As this builds up in this part in here between these two surfaces, it gets where ignition is not positive because on firing it's landing on a cushion of fouling. Thus, that's an indicator. If I start cocking and I'm seeing a lot of fouling build up in here, it's time to change nipples on the gun. So that's it in a nutshell. Most of the time when I see a lot of cap jams, it's bird up hammer face, it's weak main spring, it's a nipple that's not performing the way it should. Now, aftermarket, you can buy slick shot nipples. And if you'll notice the design of those aftermarket nipples, they're more vertical than round. The stock nipples that come on the guns are more of a kind of a rounded shape, and the aftermarket's more of a tight cone. You're looking at a very sensitive timing because one of the things that Colt was looking at with this was he did not want you to have to pry the cap off the spent cap off the nipple. I did an experiment several years ago when I was learning about all this stuff, and there was no literature, no internet, and you just had to figure it out. I took a series of nipples out and wrapped the thread up with tape stuck it into a drill and using it like a mini lathe, I turned it slowly and put a file up there and kind of combed them up a little bit more. 
flatten them. Squared off the end. And it did work. Disadvantage, I had to pry every cap off. The back of the cap would blow out and just leave a tube sitting there. And I, every time I went to reload, I had to pry off dead caps. The design that Colt came up with with that kind of rounded shape was to bust the cap in a given configuration. So, what can you do to limit on this problem? One, clean up that hammer face. Two, if you've got one that's doing a lot of cap jams, take a triangular file, and what you want to do is this. And it has to be a small triangular file. We're going to imagine for the moment that this end of the barrel is the nipple. Okay? And that this is the top of the nipple facing on the top of the cylinder, and this is the bottom of the nipple. On this bottom edge, I'm going to take my file and make just a shallow V right there. Really just one or two good cuts. I want to be able to catch it with a fingernail and nothing else. What is that going to do? It's going to give a weak link so that when that pressure comes back, it's got an automatic flaw right there, and that's where it goes. And that splits the bottom of the cap more cleanly, more openly. The split open cap sitting on the nipple, as it rotates, it falls off like that. That was Colt's design. He did not want the spent percussion caps to be stuck on the gun. That was very time consuming to take off. In many of the percussion rifles and shotguns of the day, you do notice this where they make statements about having to pry the cap off after every shot because the nipples were too straight. So he made it where it would bust the cap and have it fall off. So it forms a gas seal to check that returning pressure. I hope this helps guys. For the most part, it's a one-on-one -on -one basis on it. There are a lot of little factors, but those are the three big ones that I've seen in my life. And I've probably had a hundred plus percussion guns. And I had a uh, 1860 Army that was just notorious for it. It seemed like every other round it did. I changed nipples, and that's when I learned to fix the hammer face. I had another one that seemed to do it about every 10th or 11th, and I figured out the mainspring wasn't strong enough in it. Bit by bit, through trial and error, these are the little pieces of wisdom that I've learned that have helped me, and I hope it helps you. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.